COVID-19, why you do this to me? I really don't like being stuck in quarantine. I have no toilet paper, I don't even have a snack. Hey, coronavirus, I want my life back. That's the way we're starting every day now. I don't, I don't, like I said, I don't care if nobody else is doing it downtown. I'm doing it because we need to thank our uh, frontline workers, and I'm near Hospital Row, so that's wonderful. Uh, we also need to thank our service workers, anybody who's running a restaurant, who is running uh, buses, transit, anything like that. So that is what we were doing. So uh, I, I, you know what? I hope you do it as well because they deserve it and they need to hear it. I hear from so many different uh, uh, professionals and frontline workers that when they hear those thank yous, that it, it means the world to them. Okay, I'm gonna put my mic in and put the power cord in. There we go, how's everybody doing? How's everybody doing? Uh, that, that, and let me see. Hi from Newfoundland, let's put Dar uh, Darlene on there as well. Arlene, nice to see you. And our good friend, Mike Robin, who was on the first panel, he'll be back, he'll be back. We will uh, we'll, we'll be uh, having a panel today, in fact. Let me bring my microphone back closer now. There we go, now. Now, we're getting set up. I think we need that light on, Parker, yeah. Uh, Parker's here as well. Parker, I forgot to ask you to whistle out the window. Can you go whistle out the window? This, and do it out the window, please. It is really loud. <whistles> like it is, it is piercing. But, hey, love that. Uh, let's see, Sally, and add you. Hello, Brian, nice to see you. Uh, Laura, uh, Carmen, I'm gonna put Carmen on because Carmen's saying hello to, uh, to Parker as well. Here we go. You know, to my estimation, depending on what your situation is, we are about a month into seclusion, about a month into isolation, uh, give or take. A couple of days it depends on when you went into isolation there was the official order there was also schools closed the week before uh so we're about that month period for everyone and it is tough um so i want to get your take today on how you're feeling and we're going to bring the isolators panel on in just a few minutes but let's have a little chat about a few other things that are happening right now i want to show you some this this was sent in by someone this is what they did for their their custodian in their building, and I love this. He doesn't know what hit him. <laughs> So thank you very much, Regina, for, uh, for that. All right. Now, what do you want me to do here? Hold on. Bring the co comments up. Parker, Parker, is, uh, Parker is giving me some stuff off to the side here. Uh, oh, bad day. My hubby would have been 55 today. It is the first time without him. So Donna, um, first of all, you know what? I think it, it, it's worth mentioning and celebrating uh, would would have been his birthday. Our thoughts, our prayers uh, are with you. And that's what uh, we are. Oh, I got to put this one on too, Catherine. Kevin, we adore you. Hi, how you doing? Uh, Barb, hello from uh, Burlington. Joanne is joining us from Sable Beach. Good to see everybody today. I'm going to remind you as well that I am leaving uh, these phone numbers on every once in a while. If you are in crisis, I, I encourage you to reach out for help. So if you just feel that, that you, can't, you can't handle it anymore, you're, you're feel, you feel as though you may hurt yourself or somebody else, I uh, definitely want you to reach out to these numbers. This is an interesting story. You may have heard this story, but unfortunately the whole story didn't get told and I'm finding out more about it. It's about that Loblaws in Forest Hill. Did you hear about this one? Easter Sunday, for some reason, the Loblaws was left unlocked, music playing, 
no staff. People came in and they started shopping. Now, a lot of the headlines said that people just, you know, walked off with groceries, which they did. However, one witness there said not one person they saw walked off without gro- with groceries without leaving their name and number and everything and promised to come back and pay later. So that, uh, that says something about what's going on, that some, they weren't looting the store. It was a mistake that somebody made. I can't blame them in this time where you've got skeleton staff, you've got worries. I really hope that Loblaws is not going to take any severe disciplinary action against uh, someone who left the store unlocked and left, left everything on. I don't know what the circumstances are surrounding it, but these are different times, and we need definitely for, uh, we need some tolerance. Here's what you're saying about what you're doing. I've learned that I work faster and harder when there is no way to take off for drinks with friends twice a week. I'm an author. Had no idea I could write a whole novel in 10 days. Way to go, Cynthia. I've also learned that meal planning prevents leftovers going to waste. There's a lot more meal planning going along. I've been asking you how you're coping a month later, right? I learned my quirks. Reworrying slash planning for the future finally came in handy. Yeah. Those of us who have anxiety, it actually helps sometimes. Despite having more time, I become really selective of where it goes. Not me, but my kid said, I love this, I always thought I was an introvert until I had no choice but to stay home. Now I know there's a little bit of extrovert screaming to be set free. To understand the full effect, the set free must be said in the, the most dynamic way. So thank you very much for uh, your comments and thank you for keeping me in the loop about how it is going. How is it going for you? How is it going for you right now, uh, a month later? This new normal, this new normal and not knowing when this new normal is going to go back to the old normal. Uh, Let me see, Uh, Karen says, I learned to appreciate being home and cooking. Yeah, for sure. Uh, I love what uh, the teacher at my kid's school did today. They made a video and sent it to all the kids to say hi, and they missed them. Um, here's Mike. Hold on, Mike. Uh, we've been writing down what we uh, eat on the calendar so we can remember what we like. Yeah, yeah. It, you, it, it, food becomes much more important, doesn't it? It really does. Now, here's uh, on the other side of it. Here is Arlene, tired of cooking and cooking and cooking more. Uh, Sandy, feel like I'm living in a loop. Wake up, stare at computer, cook, sleep, and I guess repeat. Well, I would like to bring on our latest panel of uh, viewers. So here we go. It is time for the Isolators. On this edition of the Isolators, I want to welcome three guests from around central and southern Ontario. Let's start up in the top left corner. That's uh, Rick Mazenev uh, in Toronto. You're an IT analyst, Rick. Yeah, that's correct. I work for RBC. It's, uh, I'm on a telecom side of the fence, so everything, everything voice calls. Yeah, and, and, and I use your, what, what you do, I use a lot because I lose my card a lot. And I need that, that telecommunication with the bank, and they're always very good about that. Oh, yeah. Um, let's uh, also introduce you to Dana Gray in the top right corner there. She is in Scarborough. Hi, Dana. Hi, how is everybody? Uh, well, how are you? I'm, that's that's the question. Uh, I work at a. I I'm still at work. You're still I at work. Three days a week at a condominium. Yeah. That's right. You were telling me. So you work as a property manager, so to so to say, keep buildings running. I'm I'm an assistant, but I'm there alone, and yeah, I do try and help everybody out. Yeah. So we had run this this video about this one uh, unit or one apartment building here in Toronto where they told the custodian to come out, didn't tell him why, and then everybody's out in the balcony cheering and clapping. So what has been the reaction with your residents? A lot more subdued. Um, Most of the time I just see them walking their dogs past my office. Uh, They are feeling the pinch of being at home and being locked up uh it's it's hard because you can't come down and gossip and talk in in the hallways because you're not supposed to be out yeah it's it's tough on everybody it certainly is and last but certainly not least 
let us bring Rick Gorell in uh, to this. He is uh, in. To, I'm just going to move some comments here, Rick, because it was right in, right over you. Um, you're in Aurelia, where you say it is snowing right now. Yes, that's a sad truth, Kevin. <laughs> Rick, what do you do for a living? Well, Kevin, I'm a semi-retired. Uh, I drive a school bus right now. Yeah, and. That's uh, awesome. <laughs> why do you say why <laughs> Dana, you. why do you why do you say that's awesome? I did that quite a few years ago. I drove a school bus for about six months. Oh, it yeah. was a blast. <laughs> <laughs> it was a blast. Oh, I don't know. Oh, yeah. do, you, do you enjoy it, Rick? Yeah, I really miss my uh, my students. I, I drive a high I do a high school run and an elementary run. And okay. uh, everybody is really wonderful. Um Hold on for one second. I've got to. Oh, I gotta unlock that scene. Hold on. I I put Dana in on your camera. This is your camera. Dana, stay out of his camera, please. Uh, yeah, Dana. <laughs> <laughs> How are you guys coping now that we're into that that month? Let Let's talk with uh, Rick Mazenev. Rick M. We'll call you. How yep. has life changed for you in this this new normal? Well, you know, I mean, what can I say? Uh, the obvious things have changed, right? Go on simply for groceries and whatnot. It's become rather difficult, and uh, panic buying is a thing. Uh, personally, uh, you know, some of the changes, I mean, living in Toronto, it's really part of the rat race. Uh, I've been, you know, struggling with this daily commute downtown every day on the subway. Uh, and myself in northern Ontario, so smaller city that we're used to you know, growing up, but uh, not having to do with the subway every day is uh, really been nice. I got to tell you, it's, uh, <laughs> yes. oh, yeah. that, that, that's one of the positives for sure. I mean, the, the people on the TTC do a phenomenal job. Yeah. They, they do take a lot of yeah. flack, but I'm go just going to say that uh, uh, for a guy like myself, the later years of his career, just not going in every day like this or like I had been is, is been beautiful. You can continue, Dana. Why you were you were agreeing with that? Oh yeah, the TTC. You can guarantee every day that you use it, you get a seat. It's <laughs> fun. <laughs> yeah, it's great. Everybody stays away from each other, respects the distance, and there's maybe ten people on a car on during rush hour, either there or back. So it, you feel very um, safe that you're not going to catch anything because yeah. everybody's so spread out. Uh, getting a lot of love for Aurelia, Rick. Oh, uh, really? Yeah. Uh, here's, here's Carrie. I'm just going to put that up there. I swear I'm always thinking of the Mariposa Market goodies. Yeah, the Mariposa Market. Uh, um, my retirement job involves uh, being a bus driver. I've uh, always liked the, uh, uh, the drivers that my kids had. <laughs> That's from, uh, from Mike. And uh, one more from Anne. Aurelia is awesome. Love living here. So Anne is up in Aurelia as well. Do you know Anne? Yeah. <laughs> Sorry. Yeah, as a matter of fact, I do, Kevin. <laughs> so what, what, do you see any difference in being... So we have rural communities. We have small communities. We have medium to mid-sized communities, which I'm going to put Aurelia into the category of. Then we have the really large communities. What, what's it like in Aurelia for you, do you think, compared to others? Well, I lived in Toronto for uh, 35 years, and we moved up to Aurelia back in 2003. I love living in Aurelia. Um, the, the, the pace is slower. Uh, you, you, you know more people. It seems a little bit uh, closer-knit. Uh, Kelly, the blanket looks awesome. What is this person talking about? <laughs> There's conversations going on during the show behind the scenes that you guys don't even even realize right now. So, is it? Are you gonna? Are you? Are you okay, Dana? No, Dana, you wanted to explain. You wanted to explain this too. And anybody these days who coughs or you know has a, has a, has a temperature uh, is immediately oh, COVID, COVID, oh, yeah. Corona, right? I, yeah, I've had run away from me on the TTC like they couldn't get away faster I have asthma and I only got diagnosed last year so still getting used to it using puffer um, doing things differently I find talking a lot will aggravate it um, and and yeah I, I carry around a thermometer with me so that uh, 
if I, I'm also going through menopause, so I get hot flashes and I think, oh my God, the cough, the fever, I've got it, I've got <laughs> it, and I panic and I take my, my temperature and go, oh God, it's menopause again. <laughs> uh, what? So, <laughs> Which Rick was that that was laughing heartily there? I, it was me. I, 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 I'm sorry, Dana. That just uh, that struck me as being kind of funny. It is funny. <laughs> well, I'm glad reality. you can say so because I would get in trouble, I think, if I said that. Um, so th- one of the things that's being floated right now is, is, is that if we, you know, if when we get back to what is somewhat normal, that we're going to have our temperature taken every time we go into a store or into a restaurant. What do you guys think? Um, let's go. Post- that'll be hard. Yeah, that'll yeah. be hard to manage. I think. I, I think. You, go ahead. Yeah. Go ahead, Dana. Postman at our building said that when he goes to drop off the mail at other buildings in the area, that they take his temperature. There's a few buildings that he walks into, like our seniors, seniors' homes, and they literally have one of the ones that they aim at your forehead and they take your temperature. And uh, one person actually said, you must be dead because I can't get a reading. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, yeah, these these places are being very cautious, even with the mail. Here's uh, Kim saying, uh, I'm asthmatic too. I carry my inhalers like a vampire hunter carries a steak. If I cough, <laughs> I get a look. I pull out the inhalers and use them right away. Do you, do you feel that everybody's looking at you, Dana? Oh, absolutely. I, I feel so embarrassed and I try drinking and I try my puffer and I try this and, and it it takes it has to take its course until it you you clear whatever caused it in the first place and, and you can't stop you want to stop. It just keeps going. It's, oh it's embarrassing. <laughs> what have what have we done, do you think, for ourselves, for our community? that you hope carries through once isolation is lifted? You know, Rick Mazenev, why don't, you, why don't you start? So what do I hope that we carry through? I, I guess uh, an appreciation for the things that uh, you used to take for granted, right? Uh, I think that we live with so much excess that uh, all of a sudden you find out how much you really don't need and how uh, small your world can be and still try and, you know, find a, golden nuggets of the day and, and, and see the good things. So a lot, life life goes really quick, especially in Toronto. Uh, it's 100 miles an hour all the time. Right now, everything's slowed right down. I think, uh, and uh, you know, everybody's just taking a step back, living a simpler life uh, while this thing plays out. And, uh, yeah, I, I, I got to say, uh, I, I really hope that people, you know, uh, the rat race that is Toronto is, is, is less of that as a result. So, and you, I mean, you, you said it, uh, you said it there. It, it's, um, it's nice that, uh, I don't go to the grocery store as much as I used to. I would go to every single day. Yeah. And now yeah, I have, yeah. you know, I go, I stock up on what I need. Yes. It costs more at one time, but I'm, I'm just not going nearly as much. Dana, are you finding the same thing? Yeah, I, one, I don't like to stand in the lineup. I couldn't do that every day. It would make me crazy. But, um, it, yeah, you, you go in the store, you go slowly, and you make sure that you avoid people. It's it's almost like walking a maze. It's like, oh, there's somebody, there's somebody, i got to go this way. Um, but you pick up only what you need, you know, instead of picking up, like, 20 of something and and yeah, you do pick up one extra. Like, what if you have to stay in an extra day? You can't get out in a week, and you need you run out of apples. But you know what I hope that people remember out of all this is moderation, and I hope that they appreciate and stop cutting our health care and our TTC, and how much we rely on services that are somewhat some some not all are the lowest paid and the least appreciated and they should be way more recognized that they're holding us together right now. You know, I think, uh, and I'll, I'll throw this one to, uh, to Rick and Aurelia. Uh, I think we've reevaluated our priorities 
I, will we learn from it? Everyone is kind of thinking we might go back to being a bunch of jerks when this is all over. But do you, <laughs> do you think, Rick, that we, we will learn from this? I like to think that this experience is teaching us to be a little bit more kinder and gentler with one another. Um, I know that uh, on a day-to-day -day basis, uh, people are doing things that are they wouldn't normally have done before COVID, right? They're, they're, they're helping people out. Like my, my wife, for instance, shopped for a friend of hers who was uh, self-isolating. And it's neighbors helping neighbors. That's uh, I think uh, we can all agree that that's the one great thing that has come out of all of this. Mm -hmm. uh, now, I'm going to go back to Dana because uh, Dana is in a position. I mean, a school bus driver, everyone loves a school bus driver. Uh, IT course. analyst, nobody likes an IT analyst, but don't worry about that. We'll talk about that another time, right? No, but I mean, you fly under the radar. Someone who works for a property management is in the direct line of fire for so many people. It's rare that someone comes and says, Dana, I guess, hey, boy, did the furnace work well today? Or, or the <laughs> hot water was just the right temperature. What, has there been a change in, in that attitude for people complaining, Dana, at all? Um, it's changed to more of, of the kids are running around, they're making a noise. The, the complaints are just changing to so-and-so's making noise, so-and-so's doing this. It's almost, in some ways, it's a bit of a tattle on somebody. Yeah. And other ways, um, it's, it's less focus on the material things and uh, more focus on uh, they want their space. They're stuck at home, they're frustrated, and they just want that space to be exactly the way they want yeah. it because they're stuck there. I'm going to bring this comment back up. It's from uh, Jennifer. I know, and I think Jennifer's commented before about being from Fort McMurray. I know after the fires in Fort McMurray, it changed our town. Jennifer, can you comment again, please, how it changed the town? Was it good, and did the good last afterwards? That's a fine example. That was an entire community uprooted, in many cases isolated, and torn apart, and normal life just did not exist. So... When you say it changed your town, was it for the better? And, I, and I'm, I'm hoping, I'm hoping that it was. So I'm going to watch for Jennifer's comments down here on, uh, on the bottom. Uh, I want to talk about a, being a school bus driver because I, I know a lot of teachers miss their kids. And I bet you miss your kids too, Rick. Yeah, very much. Uh, they, they all have unique personalities. Um, I, I think there's something to laugh about every day when I'm driving the kids around. So I, yeah, I'm 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 looking forward to going back. But to be honest, Kevin, uh, I am reconsidering whether I want to go back. Why? Uh, well, just because of uh, the COVID situation, and uh, uh, we don't know how long it's going to go last. They may start school up again in September, for all we know. But back in 1918, it went for a whole year. Uh, that pandemic. And 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 we heard today from uh, the premier that uh, we, uh, the school will not start. There was, there was a hope it would start again on May the 4th. They said that a few weeks ago in, in, in hope, but they made it official today that that will not. So it looks as though at least the year, this, this year is gone. And I sure hope that's yep. not the case. We're already hearing about some small businesses closing down. So I, I'm, you know, I'm hoping that we can come out of this better, stronger, that vaccines are available. Uh, here's Diana says, by the way, you have the uh, perfect uh, personality for a bus driver. <laughs> I think that's a compliment, Rick, <laughs> I believe. I know Diana when she calls. She, she, and, and look at this. Here's, here's Matthew saying, good, uh, good, uh, good job, Rick. He's appreciating uh, what you do. Thanks, Matthew. Uh, now, uh, Rick M., you work, you know, you, your work, your work is, is absolutely essential because, but people don't see what you do and you don't have to deal That's directly right. with people. You're an IT analyst uh, and, and what you do. And there's so many people like you out there. And I think we really need to thank them because they don't get seen. At least, you know, sometimes at the grocery stores, we have people who are saying thank you to the, the, the cashiers and, and people restocking the shelves because they see them. But nobody's thanking you. Can we, can we please say everybody... Can we please say thank you, Rick? Thank you. Oh, yeah. Thank you, Rick. <laughs> Behind the scenes guy. Yeah. <laughs> does, does, does that get tough sometimes, though? 
You know what? No, just just my personality. I just uh, I like being part of the you know the background furniture type of guy. Just uh, I, I, yeah, you know, I enjoy what I do, so I get a lot of satisfaction that way, interacting with uh, people that uh, speak my language. You know, which is a different language in IT, but uh, <laughs> I, I, I got no complaints, oh, yeah. man. I mean, uh, weathering the storm, still having a job. A lot of people aren't so lucky. Uh, I, I am very fortunate, and uh, I do pre, or I do consider myself lucky. And yeah, I don't need uh, a lot of recognition in the ways that other people might experience it. But I, I'm all good. Here's here's a good one. Um, my husband is a factory worker who does not get uh, thanked for making cleaners for the hospitals, but we know wow. just how important we just know how important every single cog in in these gears is for our society right guys absolutely absolutely and and that includes now uh you're not you're you're doing um school bus uh but you know that includes all of the transit operators and we're not just talking about ttc we're talking about uh mississauga we're talking about aurelia transit we're talking about north bay transit etc cetera, etc cetera. there's still people who are keeping our societies running uh rick Absolutely, I, the the the, the trans. You can't underestimate the importance of uh, transit, of moving people from place to place. What was it like uh, the final days uh, before the schools closed completely for you, Rick? Uh, well, actually, uh, didn't we close? Just well, before Mar- or Mar- was, March break happened. It, it right? was about two days before March break was to happen. I think it was yeah. like the Wednesday, wasn't it? Mm-hmm. Yeah. So uh, really, the, the, the COVID thing uh, was kind of under the radar at that point to, to some degree. So it wasn't until after the March break that I re- the impact of it uh, really hit me. And then I realized that, uh, yeah, I'm not going to be working for a long time. Okay, so I noticed here somebody, and I must have missed the comment about Ellen. Uh, can someone bring me up to, uh, where is it? Just asking if uh, someone hasn't, Karen, or Parker's just telling me here. It's, it's way up. Oh, there we go. Ah, okay, here we go. I just wanted to bring this up uh, because I want to address it. I'm a senior. I live alone. Not a single neighbor has checked in on me to see if I need something. So, uh, Ellen, where are you? Where are you? There are, uh, oh, Aurelia, in Aurelia. So who knows oh. of uh, something in Aurelia? Um that is like the good neighbor program. We need somebody to, to check in on Ellen. So I'm leaving that to the, to the folks on the comments. What's that? Yeah, okay. So, uh, yeah, so everyone is, is concerned about her, and we want to make sure that she is, uh, she is checked in on. What, what, have you, has, has, your, has your life changed uh, in what duties you have to uh, perform now, Dana, and things that maybe you would not have had to have taken care of before? Um. I am in a locked office during the day. I get people that wander past and tap on the door and wave, which is great. I have a window. Um, Mm -hmm. I have to look after making sure the guards have their own personal protection equipment. I ordered some uh, stuff to make masks from uh, a fabric store, and I'm hoping to delivery soon, and then I will sew them up and bring them into the guards. But... It really is making sure that all the doorknobs, all the the handles, uh, bathroom handles, everything that people touch, the cleaner has to clean. That's a new thing. It's 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 very detailed now. You have to make sure it's clean a couple of times a day. Um, Things like that. You have to make sure that you handle packages and paperwork differently. You can't handle it the same way. Because I'm always interacting with people, either by paper, packages, uh, phone, email, and then working with the security guards as well. It's, it's, um, it's still a bit of a worry, you, you know, with the gloves and the keeping the sanitizer going and, <laughs> and making sure that you're, you're on top of everything so that uh, you're safe. Okay. Uh, Patricia just uh, gave me a, a weather update. Here's our Les Nesman weather update. Patricia, uh, where are you? Currently snowing like crazy here. Is that is that Aurelia? Do you think uh, is it snowing like crazy in Aurelia, Rick? Well, it's it's snowing. Uh, whether it's snowing like crazy or not is not open to debate. It's snowing. 
That's a for me. Um, in, in all this time, has there, uh, I'm going to go back to Rick M. Has there been a huge increase in uh, the use? The, I, I guess there, uh, uh, it's a silly question. There has been a huge increase in the use of any telecommunications equipment and, 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 and online systems. Nobody can go into a bank. You've got bank workers who can't even go into a bank right now. Uh, are we right. doing okay with our, with our uh, infrastructure? Yeah, with the infrastructure, it's good. I mean, uh, dealing with uh, Bell Canada in the early days of uh, what was going on, uh, everybody wanted to increase their infrastructure, the ability to take calls to come in uh, to the environment. So uh, the word that I got off the record from my Bell rep uh, was that uh, they were experiencing what mother what Mother's Day is like, their peak day of the year. Mm -hmm. But... Uh, above that. They, they'd never seen anything like that in the first two weeks. Now, I know that the trends have dropped off. Uh, things are getting a little more normal. Uh, but uh, in the first two weeks, it was it was insane. Uh, a lot of people had a, uh, to move out of their offices, move to a home-based office. Uh, part of what I did was, you know, worked with a group of people to, to help make that happen. And my part, obviously, you know, just not as it's a whole team thing so uh so it's quite busy it's again uh now that things are settling down on the work front it's uh going a little more smoothly a little more normal and call volumes are dropped off infrastructure's handling it so it's all good are we are we becoming do you think a little bit more used to this n new normal do you think i i think a month in how can you not uh start to get used to it right yeah. i mean uh if you're not used to it by now boy you got a long road because we're like you like you say this is one month in uh we see another month and then what next after that how long right so yeah yeah and, you and, gotta change your thinking and here's tanny saying thank goodness for technology during these uncertain times um yeah uh, uh, laurie says our it person had a headache trying to set everybody up at home and that that's true right do you i don't think you reach into that do you with with, with home the home or telecommuting uh what i did personally was uh i i so <clears throat> part part of the it infrastructure on the voice side is getting calls into rbc uh so we do have uh key hub areas that has not changed and the calls do come there it's on the back end that they send them home so i get them to the front door we have another team of people that help get them to the home-based rep so whole team of people to make that happen. Um, so I have, you know, one of the thing, one of the jobs as panelists, by the way, as as members of the isolators. Uh -oh. it, <laughs> uh -oh. <laughs> uh, don't worry, Rick. Don't worry. Is is I'm looking for that positivity. What gets you through the days? What words of encouragement could you give people out there? Let's go to Dana. You start. Um. I try and tell people this isn't going to last, that hang in there. The government is stepped up to the plate and they're doing a lot to help us, that people are doing their best to stay away from each other. And I just say keep busy, like do your spring cleaning. Um, condos are seeing because they have so much people living there now, an excess of garbage but I think people just are bored and they're cleaning this, cleaning that. Don't leave it because it, it could end in a couple of weeks. It could end in a year. Mm -hmm. But use that time up as much as you can because you're going to pat yourself on the back for your accomplishments rather than going than the waste of time. All right, Rick M., over to you. Okay, what I would say is uh, always find a way to stay connected with your circle of friends, right? You should not... Uh, yeah. you know, you're put in isolation, get yourself out of isolation. It doesn't have to be physical contact. Uh, I, uh, on Friday nights, it's about three or four continuous uh, Friday nights in a row that we've gotten together on Zoom. Some people have a Zoom account. Other people just do Messenger. Some do house party. You know, there are different ways. Just learn how to get together with your friends. If you like a beer, have a beer. It's, it's a lot of fun, and it does open up your world a bit as you used to know it. Not the same, but it's still... Yeah connects you same but different <laughs> as yes. the saying goes all right and rick girl in in uh, aurelia yeah i i what, what i do is uh well from my own point of view i, I immerse myself in my uh, hobby 
uh, which is chess. My friend Steve and I, we get together every night and play chess for about two and a half hours, tell each other all our lies, and uh, do it again <laughs> the next night. I mean, that I wouldn't, uh, two and a half hours, good lord, I could probably pay about 10 games of chess in that time. Uh, yeah, <laughs> are usually, you a... usually about two games? <laughs> I don't, really? Oh no, I I I I give up like literally thirty seconds into each game. I I just can't do that. Um, I want to thank each and every one of you for joining me today. Uh, I just I want to bring people together, but I also want to show faces and and hear voices of people because we really are all in this together. We're we're not. Uh, by ourselves, by by any means. Well, that's so. true, Kevin. And I just wanted to say that just seeing your face out there every night has been wonderful for my family. Oh, thank you very much. I, it's keeping me, it's giving me something to do. It's giving me a purpose as well. So thank you to all four, uh, all four of you, all three of you for joining me and uh, keep doing what you do and thank you for what you can do. I, oh, yeah, go ahead, Dana. Can I just show people my new reality? Okay. <laughs> Oh, yeah. <laughs> Luke, I am your father. Uh, Will you, could you say, Luke, I am your father, please? <laughs> I like that's, it. That's my new reality. <laughs> I, I, you got to stay safe, and you just keep building on it. Yeah. Great. All right. Thank all right. you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. For oh. hosting all of this. It's all great. right. We appreciate it. Take care, all. All right. And that has been this edition of The Isolators. Thank you very much. And if you want to be a member of the Isolators, uh, all you have to do, first aid for your mental health at gmail.com. Send me a note. No special requirements are needed other than the fact that you just have to be able to somewhat turn your computer on. That's all. I'll help, I'll help you from there. Some very interesting uh, comments coming up there, some very interesting thoughts and some, some, some thoughts about what it's like a month after. We're still here, folks. We are still here, and all we can do is just take it uh, one day at a time. Let's bring up some more comments uh, right now. Uh, well, I have to... Uh, uh, hold on. Uh, wow, it's coming in fast and furious. Uh, the Isolators. Carmen says, thank you, the Isolators. Uh, Lisa is saying uh, good night. Jennifer Lynn uh awesome and thank you to the isolators I should get jackets made up or at least some <laughs> some really tight spandex outfits uh for a, a superhero oh. yes kev you look relaxed yeah i'm better i had the bad day earlier this week i bet you all have uh but uh, you know what i it, it's what you do with that bad day right so if you are having a bad day even a bad couple of days it's what you do with it how do you get yourself out of that and then how do you stay out of that hole uh, and mike very good advice so uh, we take this uh, one day at a uh, a time uh which one well oh, oh, oh i see i have to turn off that audio there sorry about that okay uh yeah sorry about that uh so uh let me know if you want to be an isolator send in an email if uh you uh, and by the way if you're having trouble sleeping uh, we're going to have the sleep expert on. I talked to her today. She's going to be on next week. She's not available this week. We're going to have her on next week. So be ready next week. Yes, it's probably still going to be going next week. We're going to answer all your questions about, well, if, if you're having... Uh, if you're having problems sleeping, uh, what should you do? Should, uh, should you get up if you've woken up in the middle of, uh, of the night? Uh, so we have all those questions to answer as well. So this is what it's, this is what it's like to switch a show, read comments... And, uh, and, and try and talk all at the same time. This is a good point, by the way. We need to clean up all the masks and gloves everywhere. If you're going to use a mask or a glove, don't just throw them on the ground. Don't just throw them on the floor somewhere. Please pick them up and get rid of them properly. Someone has to clean them up, and it is becoming a real mess out there. So thank you very much uh, for that comment, and thank you for all of your comments. Uh, my son, well, here's Heather. We got to deal with this. My son had a terrible day with depression, and that's sometimes a a tough thing, right? That's a tough thing about uh, about dealing with this. Is if you're with someone who has depression, uh, and how do you deal with that? How do you deal with it without you getting depressed? So the best thing to do is just you have you you have to 
understand that that depression is not aimed at you. And if they yell and they get mad, it's not aimed at you. All they need is to sometimes just to, is to let off some steam. Now, it shouldn't become abusive, right? Let me bring up those phone numbers again. Because if things are getting abusive where you are, you need to reach out. You do not need to be abused in any way. Nobody has a right to do that. Nobody has a right to do that. So if you are in crisis, reach out. There are ways that they can come and get you or at least get you out of a situation safely and to cover your tracks. I'm not sure which camera that is, Parker. I think it's, is it this, is this one here? Or hold on. Uh, should be up here. Right should be up here. That's it. Okay. Oh, there we go. Okay. So, I, uh, no, that's, that's locked. Where are we here? Parker wants me to bring up the, the mobile camera and I can't, uh, you know what? I'm going to add a scene and I can just... Uh, add it. There we go. There we are. And I'll take my ugly face out of there. There we go. So there's my, that's my control center. Pretty snazzy, right? <laughs> so basically the way it works right now, let's just get the camera to set up, is there's my video output. So when I had the, the, uh, my isolators on right there, uh, it was right there. These are, this is where I always, I have to switch everything. So if I want to bring up the isolators intro, I click that and then that comes up. And this is why the audio is always so weird, because uh, I've got to control all the, all the levels here and remember to mute, like mute Skype and that uh, right now. So if that's why this is all uh, looking like a train wreck sometimes, that's because it, it is. I want everybody to have a great night tonight. I want you to take a breath. I want you to smile. I want you to, take, to, to realize that we are going to get through this and we are going to get through this one day at a time, one step at a time. We're all here for each other. As Kevin says right now, Kevin Frasois, good panel and conversation. We are a community. And then there's Anne Spandex. Yes, indeed. All right, folks. Take care of yourself and please take care of each other. I have a snack.